Hey y'all, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm gonna make um, some cornbread. Now my husband is from Robilene, Louisiana, and that's between Manny and Natchitoches, just in case you'd like to know. That's where he was born and raised. But anyway, we went to Bobby and Wafers one time on the way to Natchitoches to see the lights at Christmas time. And she had homemade soup and some of the best cornbread I'd ever had in my life. Of course, I asked for the recipe. This was in 2014. And she uh, gave me the recipe, and it was Bobby's mother's recipe. Now, we always refer to her as Sister Manasco, because Troy and them went to church with her, and that's just what they called her. I think Wafa and them called her Momo or Mimo. But I'm just going to call it, just like it's on my recipe card, Sister Manasco's Cornbread. You're going to melt a couple of tablespoons of grease, and I use bacon grease in your skillet. Get it screaming hot. Sprinkle a little cornmeal in the bottom. Put your cornbread mix in there and bake it for about 30 minutes at 375. And let me just tell you, that's some of the best cornbread I ever ate. So I'm going to get everything together, and I'll bring the camera down here close where y'all can see what I'm doing. And we'll make some of Sister Manasco's delicious cornbread. Now I'll take y'all a picture of the recipe card. At the, but I'm going to put in my cup of cornmeal and my cup of self-rising flour. I'm going to add my uh, salt and soda and sugar. And I'm just going to stir that around to incorporate it a little bit together. You could have put that in a sifter, but you know, that's okay. This will work just as well. Yeah, the first time I ever got to go to Natchitoches and see the Christmas lights was I had met Troy in 69, New Year's Eve, and then we married that summer of 70, and uh, the next year we went over for the Natchitoches Festival, and we went just about every year after that for many, many years. And at that time, the lights were the all different colored Christmas lights, and now they're just blue, and I liked it when it was all the different color. It looks so old-fashioned and homey. But anyhow, it's a great, it's a great trip if y'all have never been to see it, or um, just need a day trip somewhere if you're close enough. And it's the 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 big deal is the first Saturday of December. But if I understand right, they turn the lights on now Thanksgiving weekend, so people that are home for the weekend for Thanksgiving and can't come back during Christmas get to see the lights. And I think they they shoot the big fireworks every Saturday night in December. And I'm not sure when they turn them off, maybe after New Year's. But anyhow, if you've never been, it would be worth the trip to Natchitoches to see that. Okay, I've got my dry ingredients in. And I'm going to add in one-third of a cup of oil. And I'm just using vegetable oil. One-fourth of a cup of buttermilk. One egg. I broke the yolk and it's running everywhere. And I'm going to mix this. And I didn't write down the exact amount of sweet milk that they said that she said to use. And she may not have had an exact amount. So I'm just saying enough to make it. I've got a cup here. Let's see how much it's going to take. I think it'll probably take about a cup of sweet milk. Yeah, it's going to take some more milk. I'm going to put the full cup in, and then we'll see what we got going. Get out of there. Stubborn little outfit. Yeah, I think a cup of sweet milk. Did y'all call it sweet milk? Troy just called it milk. We always called it sweet milk or buttermilk. If we was having regular whole milk, that was sweet milk. And if we were having buttermilk, which I didn't have, it was buttermilk. And if it was evaporated milk, it was just called canned milk. Now that's how we worded it at our house. In our hood, that's what we called it. Okay, I've got everything in here. 
I've got my skillet screaming hot over here, but I'm going to heat it again just to be sure. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of cornmeal in the bottom, just like they said to do. I want to get that skillet really hot because when you do that, your cornbread turns loose most of the time. Be my luck today, it won't. But when you flip your skillet over, because that, that that's been on the skillet's good and crunchy, that's what you want on the top. Uh, the reason it stays crunchier longer like that, if you set it on its bottom, you're not going to get that good crunch. And man, I'd like to just slice that off and eat that by itself. My little 10 inch skillet, and it may be a little bit small, but we're going to see. If I need to put a little bit in something else, I can. Okay, there's some cornmeal. Get this whisk out of the way. Let's put our batter in. I think it's going to be perfect in this skillet. This was my mama's skillet. No telling what all this is cooked since 1944 when she and dad got married. I like to put a little of that bacon grease around up on the top. Okay, this goes into a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes. So I'll set the timer and I will uh, uh, bring y'all back and tell exactly how much and let you see the cornbread. Now I like to get me a piece of it while it's hot and put some butter on it. That is delicious and I also like to butter it and put jelly on it. Mama said I'd have made it real good in the depression because if I had to choose between biscuits and cornbread I would have chosen cornbread. I love cornbread. So let me get it in the oven and uh, we'll be back in just a bit with some good cornbread. Okay, hey y'all, here's the cornbread in my iron skillet cooling just a minute and then I'm going to flip it out on a serving platter. See, it's nice and brown on the top, but oh my goodness, that bottom that's next to that cast iron is going to be crispy and delicious. I'll be right back and make y'all hungry. What I usually do to flip my cornbread out, I use this wooden pizza slip. So let me get it on here. I always put those things because I do not want my, um, my butcher block. It brings the moisture up out of it if you put... I'm going to run this knife around it just to loosen it just in case. Okay, let me get my board here. And there you have it. Now, doesn't that look wonderful? Oh my goodness, and it's just crunchy and crusty and delicious. I'll cut it here in a minute and show y'all a piece of it. Here it is, all cut. And oh my goodness, that top is so crispy. That little piece right there, I want to peel it off and eat it, but whoever gets that piece at the dinner table is going to want that. I'm going to get one of these side pieces here that has all of the crunch on it. Sure am. I'm, I'm going to fix the plates and that way I can get the one I want. Yeah, there's another one. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff, y'all. That's, that's soul food. Okay, you know how to make bean soup and you know how to make the cornbread to go with it. Y'all, you need to try this. Now this is special to us because of the memories tied to Troy's hometown and lifetime friends and kin folks. But besides that, it's just pure down home good cooking. And it's good. It's, it'll make you happy if you have some cornbread and soup or cornbread and greens or cornbread and beans or cornbread and butter and jelly. I even like it with milk gravy. I told you I like cornbread. Bobby, I hope you're watching this and it brings back some sweet memories for you of your mama making her good cornbread. Sure do thank Wayfe for giving me the recipe a long time ago and I think of her every time I make it. See, because of this recipe, we have some really good memories. Y'all need to 
to cook some good stuff, write down your recipes, share them with your family and friends, and generations to come will be enjoying things that you enjoy today. See, that's just a good idea. Y'all need to do that. In the meantime, turn off those iPhones and iPads and computers and, and, and watches and visit with the people that surround you verbally instead of texting. Don't lose your social skills. Don't let your kids lose your, their social skills. We got a group of kids that they really don't care if they're visiting with their friends in person or not because they're playing online. That's ruining our world, y'all. You better wake up. You're going to have a bunch of zombies on your hands. I know I'm old school. Proud of it. I had a good life. I still have a good life. And I'm very thankful for it. Y'all come back tomorrow and see what else we're going to have. I'm thinking we're going to have my mama's pound cake. And you don't want to miss that one. Oh, my word. It is delicious. See y'all tomorrow. Right back here at the same time. God bless you.